Hey everyone, this is Devin Moreno and welcome to the Baltimore Investors Channel. And today I wanted to go into how do you set up everything you need for your first house hack. Now if you guys don't know, a house hack is a method where you use a primary residency loan to live for free. The one I'm going to discuss though today is when you use that primary residency loan on not a triplex, duplex, or quad, but instead a single family home with multiple rooms. This house I'm standing in is actually my first house hack and it actually has five bedrooms, so five different tenants in the house. You're actually seeing it right now on a very typical day. It's actually always empty. <laughs> we have to tell people that all the time. It's always empty. Anytime people get a little worried about five people in a house. But uh, the thing is, there's a couple of things about a room sharing house that make them very unique. The tenants are obviously not gonna be able to uh, get like furniture and such because they're not gonna be able to put it in here and start sharing furniture with other people and then have people in the common areas. So what is it that you need to buy? What is it that you need to get in order to make a house hack work? So first here, I'm gonna start in the living room, go into the kitchen and the outside. So these are the three common areas of my house hack. So first you're gonna note here the uh, couches and furniture. Uh, all of this, all of the furniture that you do see here, all I got for $1,000. So if you can make that kind of your goal, how do you do this, might you ask? You can do it off Craigslist. These couches all combined was an eight piece furniture set for 500 bucks. Then this table over here came for another $300. Unfortunately, we did have to get a table that kind of fit the aesthetic, but there were some cheaper ones. We also got a lot of these decorations you see pretty much also included in that furniture charge for part of that $1,000 fee. The, everything that we chose, we tried to use calming colors that relax you. So we tried to stick with your neutral blues, some of your browns, keeping in with the aesthetic of the home. The home is obviously kind of an older style. The reason we did this is kind of part of the energy and the feel of the house. The type of energy you put off in the house is what how it's going to interact with the tenants a little bit. So they are going to kind of mature or change depending on that very subtle ways. Also, uh, you may notice here we don't have a TV. We actually have this photo here, just once again, a calming little picture of a lakeside. We purposely didn't do that because we have a basement tenant. If we had a lot of congregation down here, we might have people who are watching a football game might be leaving chips and trash all in the living room and such. So to avoid that, we made it where this area is really a place to just relax. But more importantly, it's to give an ambiance of being home. The thing is that I often tell people about the furniture is it's not for the tenants in the house. Sure, they might use it, but what the furniture is actually here for is for the tenants you're bringing in to show the house. It gives them an instant feeling of I'm home. It's a cozy, warm feeling. So that's what you're getting the furniture for. So just keep that in mind. Obviously, choose your design of your furniture based on your area. Since I have an older house, this house is 120 years old, <clears throat> well, I got older furniture. I didn't get modern styles and designs. Things you don't have to get. You may notice there's a desk here. You don't necessarily need to get that, but I thought it fit well into this pocket here. And on the other side, you'll see where the table was. So that was kind of a decision I decided to make. And that was the end of the $1,000 price tag. So beyond that, um, everything else you see here is cheap, all found at Michael's. Uh, if not Michael's, maybe like yard sales, Goodwill. Don't go anywhere expensive, guys. You can decorate a house very cheaply. So let's go ahead into the kitchen. All right, and here we are in the kitchen. Now, if you're gonna have any tension amongst five tenants in the house, it's gonna be in here. So this is really, really important that you get this right and you get what they need in order to function and live peacefully in the house. Now here you see a kitchen with once again five people and it is exactly like this. It doesn't look any different most of the year. Uh, I mean, we might have some people who cook a little bit more, might have a few more utensils, but otherwise make sure they have enough counter space to do what they need to do. Now, what is it that you need to do though? What is it that you need to buy for your kitchen in order for them to function? Well, we also wanna do this cheap, all right? We can buy them all the things in the world, but how can we get the most cheap and effective options? Number one, Regarding uh, the, what you see here on the counter, I'd recommend dish racks. A uh, little thing like this is only like five bucks. This is because dishwashers here like this one tend to break all the time. They break about once a year. In fact, I've already had it reported that this is broken again. So it's more often gonna be a dish rack. So it's often good to have one of these. I even have a dish towel just for those exigent circumstances. Also here on the counter, you're seeing another thing that a lot of tenants do need. Everyone here needs a microwave. 
everyone you well not everyone needs a toaster but that's ten dollars microwave 20 bucks go on offer up craigslist this is extremely simple stuff you can get one of these for twenty dollars and they almost always work why because someone bought a microwave for their house moved into an apartment that already had a microwave and now they have two microwaves so these things are super easy to find now as far as plates and such i'd highly recommend getting at least a certain amount of basic options. So what are we looking at here? We're looking at pots and pans for about $30 at Walmart. You can get an eight piece set, very easy. If a cook wants something more fancy than that, they can go ahead and get that. Generally though, the average person will only need that. Plates, you can find them at yard sales. You can find them donated all the time. People are constantly getting rid of plates. Fortunately, if you get those porcelain plates, you're gonna be looking at very expensive costs and a lot of breakage. So try to avoid getting too many. Also, same thing with Tupperware. Tupperware, while you can get an initial set of 40 for maybe about $20, the problem is, is these things tend to disappear. They take them to work and never bring them back. So don't get too attached to bringing Tupperware into the house, but you can absolutely provide it maybe for once a year. So these are some simple items. I'd also recommend cups. So as we can see here, cups, these, most of them donated, not a problem. If you do gotta buy them, Walmart sells them for like 50 cents a cup. You can easily get the little plastic clear ones. They're blue and they're clear, easy to find. So these are simple things that you can do to reduce the tension in the house. You also might wanna get a few common area cleaning items too. So in here, we have a lot of the cleaning items. And what I've done here is get trash bags and the basic supplies, all right? Don't get too much brand name stuff. Let the tenants get that if they want to. You just need trash bags because the people who use trash bags the most often you know, are buying it and they're not the one using it all the most. And then uh, the ones using the cleaning supplies the most, oftentimes they're not the ones buying it either. So it can be a little bit annoying when you're buying cleaning supplies and running out of Clorox wipes all the time. If you provide them, you don't have to worry about that as much. So I'll just recommend those basic, not actually Clorox wipes. I'm gonna call them disinfectant wipes. Like I said, don't get brand name. It's gonna be a lot cheaper. And then maybe your basic 409 all multi multi-purpose cleaner. You don't need too much more than that. As far as sponges, get them at Costco. You'll get like a pack of 50 sponges for like $10. It's the best way to go. As far as trash cans, make sure that you have trash cans in the house. Make sure you label them. Some people are real conscious about that. And uh, you want people to make sure, okay, they're abiding by the rules of the house. You also wanna get paper towels for the house. All right, so down here we can see paper towels. We can see little hand towels. These things are extremely cheap. I mean, just one paper towel roll, you can get them for 50 cents, the 88 ply sheets, and they won't really run through them all that much. Not as much as you might think. They're very, very cheap. I think for $3, I can get six of these and just easily toss them in the house. And uh, these hand towels and such, once again, very easy. The reason we do hand towels is so that way, when there is the option, they can wipe their hands on the paper and the hand towel rather than over here, on the paper towel, which can run out faster. So that's something just to keep in mind. Now, I don't wanna be here and necessarily set all this up all the time. So what we do is we hire a house sitter, all right? The house sitter is simply one of the tenants in the house whom has been paid in a house this size, $100 a month in order to maintain the facilities of the house. So you'll notice here the dishes are clean. Well, by having a house sitter that cleans the dishes, make sure the counters wiped down, make sure these floors are cleaned once in a while, make sure the stove is cleaned once in a while. By having a house sitter that does these tasks, you reduce this whole broken window theory concept, which is people who tend to see a dirty space are usually more careless in a dirty in a in that space. We're so gonna also continue to dirty it. But when you see it's already clean, you tend to conform to that. So this helps with that. Now the, the house sitter generally is gonna be someone who cleans already, so you don't have to really worry about them being annoyed at it. If you already have a person in one of your room sharing houses that cleans all the time, but you don't pay them for this. I guarantee that that person is probably a little annoyed that they're constantly cleaning up after other people. I mean, who's taking the trash out all the time? Who's taking the trash out to the dump to be picked up by the city? Someone has to do this. If you're gonna get a house hack and not live in the house, you can't just rely on your tenants to do this. You need to make sure there's order and practicality to your house. So a house sitter is something I absolutely recommend. Depending on the size of your house, you can fluctuate the rates. So. This goes into another thing as far as cleaning the fridge. I mean, fridges get pretty nasty. Luckily, my fridge 
is clean. I don't have to worry about it. I don't have an issue. Now, fridges though tend to be another point of contention amongst tenants. See, the problem is I have five people in the house. Do you really think five people's food is gonna fit in this fridge? So you happen to catch me on a time where I'm near the holidays, so it's kind of empty. But I guarantee you, I can step in here most times during the year and this is full up packed with food. So you're gonna need another option. Even if you look at my freezer, you know, you're not gonna fit five people's worth of food in here. So what is our other option? We get a second fridge. And that is where we go into my utility room. So let's go ahead and take you guys over there. All right, so here we are in what I like to call the utility room. Realistically, this is just the kitchen part two. And so what we have here is a second fridge. A second fridge you can easily get for $100. You will find these for $100, trust me. If you think that's crazy, just find white fridges on offer up on Craigslist for $100. And they are working fridges and you will see they will double the amount of space that you have. Now, once again, all my tenants are on holiday. So essentially I have empty fridges, but this is a huge effort. If you happen to have four or more tenants, I would highly recommend a second fridge, even if they haven't been asking you for one. Now we also have the laundry facilities. I had to move these downstairs from the upstairs. That's actually where they used to be. And uh, obviously that's not going to work. We need them in a kind of more central location. Uh, and by upstairs, I mean in someone's room. One thing you're going to notice here, though, is this turquoise basket. See, it's little things like this that actually reduce the tension in the house. Oftentimes, you see someone's clothes were in the dryer. What is your first instinct reaction? You're trying to go from the washer to the dryer. You're annoyed, and now they have their clothes in there, so you throw them on top of the dryer. Usually, that's typically the reaction. Problem with that is socks start falling off, underwear starts going everywhere, and you got to touch other people's. It, it just get, it looks messy and it looks disrespectful. So what we do is we have this turquoise basket that we bought for all of like 10 bucks, and now you, the tenants can put it in here. Now I'd recommend chaining this to something. <laughs> We've actually had quite a few incidents where the tenants will put their own clothes in here, bring them upstairs and never bring it back, but it's something that has really helped the dynamic of the house. Especially as they get used to it, they stop doing that. Also, this is where your house sitter comes in, who's making sure that that lint is coming out the dryer, making sure your house is not gonna burn down based on no one changing the link collector. Uh, as far as laundry detergent, you don't really gotta worry about it too much. Most of the tenants provide it themselves. Uh, they have specific brands they're not allergic to, are allergic to, you know what. And uh, generally we've never had an issue with other people using other people's detergent. Uh, so I wouldn't worry about that as much. Now we go into this table here. You may notice that I've had multiple tables in the house. And this one has a nice, beautiful view of the backyard and these multiple tables are provided for an experience where if you come downstairs and you're looking to be by yourself and you just want to eat something real quick sit down and relax but then you have you know Martha and her boyfriend are sitting at the table the only one in the house well you're not going to really want to eat next to them so what happens now is you have another table option you may have noticed in the kitchen there was a third table option i have these multiple different options for the tenants to enjoy themselves in peace and privacy so even though there's five people in the house they never have to really worry about running into someone else so now i'm going to go ahead and take you into the outside and show you some of the little things that we do to make sure that everything is peaceful and cozy in this house so let's go ahead and take a look all right, so here we are in the backyard and there's a couple small things that you probably wanna pay attention to. So first, you'll notice these chairs, all right? The lawn furniture that I have. It's a common mistake that a lot of people get these furniture that's like, you know, cushioned and all that. The cushions deteriorate, all that stuff gets messed up. Don't do that to yourself. Just get these wicker material. These things have withstood everything from storms, hail, whatever, it doesn't matter. I have had these. Luckily, I didn't have to pay for these. I actually got these from a flip that we had, so the, the old owner happened to leave the furniture behind. And uh, we also had this donated. This is a glass table. Once again, durable, very, very durable glass. Highly recommend anything like this. So just watch out if you ever get the tendency to want to get more like a uh, fluffy kind of furniture. Now, as far as the yard, I did not want to have any type of yard that is 
let's say high maintenance. And <laughs> so what we did was we did this river rock design. Uh, so that way, you know, there's no grass. We have the under of it, you know, with a mesh. So all of this was really easy. And if you actually notice these plants, they look like they're dying, but they're actually not. They were just recently planted and they're all low maintenance plants. Most of them only need to be cut maybe like once a year. So a lot of these plants, once you see them bloom in the spring, they're just perfect. They're, they, they're beautiful and they need no maintenance at all. No extra work for my uh, house sitter and I'm good to go. Also, you may notice that here I have a floor type that is easy to clean. This concrete, real, real easy to clean, low maintenance. I don't got to worry about weeds coming through it or anything like that. So it saves me a lot of time with Roundup. So that's it, everyone. Uh, let me know if you have any questions regarding this setup for a house hack. Uh, obviously, we can get into a lot more of it. There's different types of house hacks. Uh, vacation rental models, for instance, would have a much different setup than this. So just let me know in the comment section below and make sure to like this video. I absolutely appreciate it. Let's me know that this is content that you are enjoying. And let me know if there's anything else you want to know about how to live for free in a house hack.